Yes, Albert Einstein at school, page number two. We had already discussed the theme and all. So the Albert Einstein, you know, this fellow had an argument with his history teacher. So that was not an argument. That was just the way he was expressing himself. He was only he only wanted to say that. Yes, Kavya, beta, sit straight. Uh, so he just wanted to convey that education is just not merely learning or cramming a few facts. It's about getting involved in it. Okay, and when you are involved in the process of education, then only something comes up, some new product comes up, then some creation happens. Okay, creation comes after involvement. So involvement is the key to key to education, actually. But his teacher was not able to understand what actually Albert Einstein was able to say. He only took this interaction as an argument. So there is always a difference between argument and interaction. Okay, interaction is always fruitful and argument is always, it, it results in a dispute. So, okay, then Mr. Brown, the history teacher, you know, he told him, that's enough, Mr. Brown's eyes were cold and cruel. We don't want a lecture from you, Einstein. You will stay in for an extra period today. Although I don't imagine it will do you much good, it won't do the school any good either. You are a disgrace and I don't know why you continue to come. The teacher knew this, that the punishment will not have any effect upon, the, upon this Einstein. Even then he gave him the punishment. That is what happens in routine also. The purpose of education is reform. But when the punishment uh, uh, results in making children arrogant, then that is of no use. So Albert Einstein said, like, it's not my wish, sir. Albert pointed out. So the teacher told him that you are a disgrace. And even then you'll keep on coming. The teacher is saying this. The teacher said, like, you are a disgrace. And even then you'll keep on coming very bad. And then Albert Einstein pointed out that, sir, it's not my wish. Then whose wish it is? What did he mean by saying this? He said, it's not my wish. What did he want to say? Yes, Manat? Yes, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. So why do most of the children come to school? Because parents want them to come to school. Okay. And is that, is it wrong? Okay, if your parents tell you today, like, better don't go to school, leave it. Then you will uh, say, no, we have to go to school. Okay. Re sometimes we don't realize what actually we want. But parents happen to be sometimes so dominating that children forget what they actually want. Actually, this happens. So when many children, they might be saying like, uh, uh, daily, we have to go to the boring school, this, that. But eventually... They don't realize that actually they don't want to, they want to go to school. If their parents give them the freedom, okay, beta, whenever you feel like going, then only you go. Then 90% children will come to school on their own. Okay. So the point is like uh, the domination, the overpowering attitude of parent, parents or of teachers, it makes sometimes children become subdued. They even forget what they are actually. So then he says, like, it's not my wish, sir, Albert pointed out. Then you are an ungrateful boy and ought to be ashamed of yourself. I suggest you ask your father to take you away. So teacher is telling the child that you, that your father should be suggested to take you away from the school. Albert felt miserable when he left school that afternoon. Not that it had been a bad day. Most days were bad now anyway. But because he had to go back to the hateful place the next morning as well. He only wished his father would take him away. But there was no point in even asking. He knew what the, he knew what the answer would be. He would have to stay until he had taken his diploma. So he never wanted to come to school the next day. But he had to come to school because his parents wanted that he should have the diploma that is a degree in his hand. Only then he would be able to pursue further. Okay. 
many of the children they continue to keep coming to school for for till the completion of 12th because unless they have that degree of 12th standard they they are not eligible for further education right going back to his lodgings and did not cheer him up so that was he was in a very his he was miserable that day this albert einstein was not happy why wasn't he happy options are because he uh, the teacher had uh, you can say humiliated him he was punished by the teacher or because he had to go to the school where he did not want to go to school where he didn't want to go what's the correct answer third answer because he didn't want to because he had to go to the same place where he did not want to go now the point is why didn't he want to go to that place again and again because there he was not able to express himself okay okay then in uh, number 1 going to school was not something which he liked don't uh, don't mistake it like he did you should know this like why didn't he want to go to school why didn't he want to go to school options again i'm giving you number 1 he hated school number 2 he hated studies number 3 he was very poor in studies number 4 he was not able to express his himself in the school fourth option he was not able to express himself in the in the school otherwise he was very genius he loved every every concept of education he loved everything almost including music history geography sciences maths all whatever would come to him him he would love that he was a great you can say learner so education was never boring to him but yes the way it was being imparted that was something he did not like and moreover he was not given a chance to express himself okay so then even going to school was miserable for him and even going back to the lodgings did not cheer him up at least when you go back home then you should be happy but it was not the case with albert even home the lodgings where he lived that was not a good place for him he didn't even want to go there why so because at this place there was a lot of noise it was a very noisy place let's read out his father had so little money to spare that albert had been found a room in one of the poorest quarters in murich he did not mind the bad food and lack of comfort or even the dirt and squalor but he hated the atmosphere of slum violence so what were the inconveniences he had at that place the inconveniences were bad food then lack of no comfort then afterwards there was lot of violence then afterwards there was lot of dirt and squalor all around it was a dirty place it was the poorest place where he could ever live because his father didn't afford much money so he was living in in very very miserable condition but what actually what was something which he was really very very uh, hateful about violence he didn't like violence the people those who are learners they don't like noise okay they don't speak much they don't like noise also okay peace is something which they always yearn for they can manage with bad food they can manage with uh, poor lifestyle they can manage with dirt and squalor even but violence they cannot noise they cannot because that disturbs their peace of mind but at least so uh, going back to the lodgings did not cheer him up so his landlady beat her children regularly so his landlady was a very violent woman she would beat her children and every saturday her husband came drunk and beat her so that kind of atmosphere he did never liked but at least you have a room of your own which is more than what i can say said yuri when he came round in the evening yuri is a very good friend of albert einstein okay so you have to remember this name yuri very good friend of albert einstein who is a friend whom you call a friend the one who understands what you don't even say okay so he was a very good friend and he told him he he tried to comfort him that at least you have a room of your own because there are people those who don't even have a room to live 
and at least you have a room so try to manage so these are the friends those who try to counsel you not spoil you but see this but at least you have a room of your own which is more than what i can say at least you live among civilized human beings even if they are all poor students said albert then albert also told his friend yuri that uh, yeah i have a room but you you are living in a better condition because you are living among civilized people okay then let's see what the concept of civilized people is girls don't talk i'll be asking a question now so albert told yuri that at least you live with civilized people what does this man say then they are not all civilized yuri replied did you not hear that one of them was killed last week in a duel so he told him yuri told him that uh, yeah people look only nice to look at okay the he says that place where i live it might look very civilized to you but actually you might have heard of a case where uh, somebody was killed in a bet in a fight between two people okay two people two friends fought and one was killed and it happened in a civilized society got it so sometimes we say like posh areas very nice people live very well off people live but what actually they do people don't one cannot make out so civilization is not about how you live civilization is a, is about it's not about where you live or or the kind of places it is it's about how you think okay what you are thinking is they are not all civilized yuri replied did you not hear that one of them was killed last week in the duel and what happens to the one who killed him look at the question of this man yuri told him like you must have heard about a story where one was killed his question albert is like you tell what happened to the one who killed the other what happens to the one who killed him it means what happened to the murderer straight question this shows us us what albert was now see the answer nothing of course he is even proud of it his only worry is that the authorities have told him not to fight any more duels he is upset about this because he hasn't a single scar on his face to wear for the rest of his life as a badge of honor so what has happened to the murderer nothing he is uh, he is moving around scot free no one is there after him rather he he is proud of what he has done and where he is very unhappy that he has been warned not to do this kind of thing in future this is civilized the society where the criminals move scot free okay so here is the irony so this man you know albert einstein lived in a place where where there was slum uh, there was there where there was violence all around dirt all around but at least their people were what they were okay oh exclaimed albert and these are the students so what does albert want to say and these are the students means this is a standard to which the students have grouped down okay this is this is the kind of level they have they have gone for well you'll be a student one day said yuri i doubt it said albert grim glumly glumly seriously so albert einstein is he a student now also so as per this terminology the student uh, one becomes a, it it happens to be a designation when somebody joins a senior or a, uh you know secondary level of education there so then they are designated as students is that clear so earlier they might be the pupils in the school then they become student when they join the university so he says like okay his friend tells him that one day you will also be a student he says that i doubt it can you say can you tell me why does he doubt it why was he doubtful about his future yes why was he doubtful about his future 
okay he can't express himself in the school then hmm yeah teachers were against him principal will also be against him if 25 if five out of five teachers are against you what will happen nothing nothing why because your overall achievement will speak okay then because there is some transparent system there are so many modules through which one can see what kind of person you are okay personalized assessment doesn't matter much okay if i say that he is a very bad child the other five teachers also say very bad child doesn't matter it will be of no use provided your achievement data also speaks that okay when you are failing in all subjects you are doing very poor outside in games you are fighting with all students outside that is different okay but here albert einstein when he had a fight only with one teacher so the principal also deduced that he was a very indisciplined child but it doesn't happen always so we were talking about like why was this man albert einstein doubtful about his future because he knew that he would not be getting the getting the chance to accomplish the diploma in school and then he would not be able to get a chance to go for further education got it because he was doubtful about clearing his school why was he doubtful about clearing his school because the school promoted rote learning the history teacher asked him when did the war take place and he could never learn when he could never learn by uh, one year so he was doubtful whether he would pass so did albert einstein fail albert einstein is what we know him as so he was the kind of student who could not learn one year so the point is education is just not the ability to cram the things because that will finish there and then okay so he says like i i doubt i don't think i'll ever pass the exams for the school diploma he told his cousin elsa the same time the next uh, so here now there is a reference to elsa his cousin then elsa will comfort him by telling him like don't worry there are idiots who pass when they learn a few things they are they are parrots even a parrot can learn a few things and can pass then you are a human being and it's very easy for you to pass just learn a few things and you'll pass he says that's only the problem is there that's the only problem i cannot learn got it genius people cannot learn the things as it is okay they can do much much better when it comes to the concept okay we know albert einstein we don't have to explain it now like whether albert einstein was a genius or a dull but he was doubtful because the school system promoted rote learning and that is what that is what elsa also said like even the duffers pass then why can't you pass but a genius kind of child was doubtful about passing so that is a defect in education system okay so i am sure he told his cousin elsa this, so this is over so elsa told him like you can also pass provided you learn a few things and he pointed out that he cannot do that okay now look at this uh, apart from books on science his only comfort was music and he played his violin regularly until his landlady asked him to stop so apart from the books on science what else did he like a lot music so he was very fond of books he was very fond of music and he would play regularly violin and only at the you know interruption of the landlady he would stop otherwise he would love to continue with that throughout the night so that wailing gets on my nerves she said there is enough noise in that house with all the kids howling so what would she say what would that landlady say like that wailing gets on my nerves which wailing the sound of the violin she would term the wailing uh, uh, the sound of the violin as wailing like that uh, like troubles me a lot like already there is so much of noise and then you also make noise with your violin so is the sound of violin noisy no 
Albert was tempted to point out that most of the time it was she who made them howl, but he decided it was better to say nothing. Okay, so it was not the children who were howling always. Who was howling most of the times, according to Albert, Divanshi? Who was howling most of the times? Children, it was not the children who were howling most of the time, it was the landlady herself. Many a times mothers complain like children make a lot of noise. But what happens? Mothers are making noise most of the times, and children are usually, you know, playing. Have you ever seen this? No, you might not have seen. And it happens with teachers also. Many a times teachers are making most of the times noise. Become quiet, become quiet. And children are not able to realize like what is to be done. Okay. I must get away from here. Very important like conversation is coming up. I must get away from here, he told Yuri after six months alone in Munich. It is absurd that I should go on like this. In the end, it will turn out that I have been wasting my father's money and everyone's time. It will be better for all if I stop now. So Albert Einstein pointed out that now I must leave. Because if I'll continue being here in the school like this, then it does it only means that I'm wasting my father's money and my own time. When you are not interested in doing something, then one must take the decision there and then. Otherwise, what one is doing? One is either wasting one's parents' money or one is wasting one's own time. And Albert, being intelligent, was able to make out. So he wanted to leave the school at the earliest. Got it? Why did he want to leave the school? Because he was not getting along, getting well along the teachers. Okay, he was not able to express himself and moreover the educational system was not as per his standards. I don't know if I go to Milan and then what would you do? Yuri asked his friend, very good friend. It's not that he started comforting him. No, no, beta, don't go. No friend, don't go. I'll miss you and all. His question is then what will you do? Okay, if you want to go, then go. But what will you do? So that is how the intelligent people think. I don't know if I go to Milan, I'm afraid my father will send me back unless so Albert knew that if he'll go back, then his father will send him back. Unless what did he want to say? Unless dash dash. What did Albert want to say? Yes, so Albert wanted to point out that unless and until he has a solid reason he will send back. So he should have a solid reason with him to leave the school. Otherwise, his father will not agree. His eyes gleamed with a sudden idea. Yuri, do you know any friendly doctors? So there and then this boy, Albert Einstein, got an idea. He asked him, like, do you know some doctor? So let me tell you the story in brief now from page, of page number 28. What will happen now? Uh, this Albert will ask if he knows some friendly doctor. Yuri will suggest him a, a doctor, a psychiatrist. But the point is that psychiatrist is a new one. He's not trained and old, very famous doctor. He's a new doctor who has come up new only, fresh, passed out. Huh. So he says that you can go to him, but yes, he is a very good doctor. Though he's not really experienced, but he's a very good doctor, you go to him. But one thing is there that he'll be able to catch you if you tell a lie. So tell him the real reason. And Albert Einstein was also not the kind of man who would mince words, the one who would tell lies. So Albert Einstein went to the doctor, to that psychiatrist, and he told him what actually the condition was. First of all, he told him like, sir, I want school leaving certificate. Like you write a, re you write a letter stating that I am suffering from mental disorder. Mind it. What did Albert Einstein want from the doctor? Albert Einstein wanted a medical certificate from doctor stating that Albert was suffering from mental disorder or nerve disorder, you can say. Because of this nerve disorder, if 
Albert Einstein would not be sent for leave, then he might have, then he might have severe consequences. For example, brain hemorrhage and all. Maybe he would get mad. Got it? So Albert Einstein wanted the doctor to give him a certificate on me medical conditions that he should be sent on leave for six months, mind it. See the planning. And the doctor said, okay, if I write it for you, then what will you do? But one thing was clear that the doctor, Albert Einstein asked him like, uh, uh, do you think I'm telling a lie? The doctor was, was convinced that Albert was not telling a lie because he said like what you are saying that, that can be said only by somebody who is getting depressed. Only the child who is on the verge of depression can say something like this, that I want to go on leave for six months uh, on this or that ground. Albert Einstein wanted leave for six months. He wanted the doctor to write that he had a nerve disorder. From his, from his side, he was thinking that he was pretending to be so, but the doctor pointed out because he was a psychiatrist, he pointed out that yes, if you are not sent on six months of leave, then you will definitely have a nerve breakdown. Then you will definitely become mad. So the point is, it is very, very dangerous for children to, to sustain themselves in very, very stressed situations. Okay, he was constantly under trauma in the school, then at home also. And this kind of situation only kills one's creativity. If Albert Einstein could become Albert Einstein, then it was because of the decision he took at this time. What decision? The decision of leaving the school. Got it? Okay, he took the medical certificate from the doctor. Then afterwards, this Albert Einstein went to the maths teacher. The maths teacher, uh, the moment he went to the maths teacher, the maths teacher told him like, yes, I don't have anything to teach you now. No. Because I have taught you whatever I had with me. Now you can further teach me now. So Albert was flushed. He was like, he felt, he was, he felt embarrassed the way the teacher was praising him because the intelligent children cannot digest praise also so much. Okay. The teacher told him like, now you can teach me because whatever I had, I have given you. So now better you leave. So he got a recommendation letter from the math teacher. Are you listening? He got a recommendation from math teacher in which the math teacher stated that he was doing extraordinary well in this in maths and was eligible to get, you know, uh, admission in further diploma. Same happened with the science teacher. And by the time he was ready to leave the school, he was uh, uh, given the order that the principal wanted to see him. So he went to the office. He was very happy that uh, now his time is saved. Because otherwise also he had to go to the principal to take some uh, school leaving certificate or all, or to apply for the leave. But he was very happy that now his time is saved. He will not have to wait to get uh, called in by the principal. He went inside the principal's office and the principal gave him a school leaving. He told him that he had been expelled from the school. Albert Einstein was thrown by the school, expelled from the school. Isn't it very alarming? Isn't it very surprising? A child like Albert Einstein was thrown by the school on the grounds that he was very indisciplined, on the ground that he was a disgrace, on, because of the reason that it was uh, impossible for the teacher to teach in his presence to the other students. And Albert Einstein at that time wanted to say so many things to the principal, but he kept quiet and just left. So Albert Einstein was expelled from the school, or you can say Albert Einstein also left the school on his own will. Okay, on one side, he left the school and on the other side, the school also expelled him. Both of the things happened together. But in between, don't forget the main concept that Albert Einstein was not the one who hated studies. Albert was the one who was very fond of learning not just maths and science, rather everything. 
many science students often say ma'am we don't like uh, history ma'am we don't like geography ma'am we don't like english ma'am we don't like this those children who are those people who are learners for them each and every concept is worth learning okay saying i don't like this or i don't like that is not uh, is not something the genius do okay the genius they don't just cram that's it so that's how what the chapter was you people go through this chapter very thoroughly so the test of this very chapter will be on saturday okay the test of this chapter and even the previous chapter what was that ranga's marriage so the test of ranga's marriage and this chapter on saturday okay tomorrow we might start with the next chapter that is there is one more chapter we'll do that yes uh, those who are present in the class they are let me read out the names again yes pramod what did i say right now pramod yes yes those who are listening to me they please raise hand okay gursirat singh is present jatin is present arsh dhruv agarwal and uday veer arshdeep okay send me the screenshot dhruv chirag pramod buddhi raja yuvraj virdi they are absent okay to, on saturday children will be the test of this chapter and the and ranga's marriage would that be fine okay 